So here in front of us, you see uh, somewhat of a more modern way of boiling uh, uh, sap down to uh, syrup. Uh, this one here is the what is called a four pan system where we put uh, raw sap at that end and then we gradually uh, bring it over this way as it boils down. And this is our finished uh, uh, pan where we boil it down again to a certain consistency and then we take it and we finish it off in the gas stove in a pot to the, uh, to the, to the syrup stage that we like. Uh, now before all this, of course, before metal, Nishinaabe, uh, I would say, must have been, uh, had, uh, had to have all kinds of ingenuity to be able to figure out how to boil this down uh, without uh, metal. Now, there's certain, if you go to conservation areas, they will, they have demonstrations of how that must have been done by hollowing out a log and putting rocks in there until this boils. I, I really, I've tried this myself and it's, uh, it's an onerous job. I don't think that's really the way they did it. Uh, there's also people who claim that you can boil uh, sap using uh, uh, birch bark. But again, I've tried that. That's, that's a really delicate uh, way of doing it. I think what they did, there's several ways that the old people used to talk about it. One of them is that you will find some rocks around that has already a concave uh, uh, molded uh, bowl sort of thing to it. If they find that kind of thing, they treasure it, they keep it, they will somehow get it to their site. Uh, you have those kind of situations, but for, for the most part, I think they used pottery. Uh, remember that Nishinaabeg were good pottery makers, and uh, and they would make special vessels to be able to boil uh, a number of uh, much more syrup than just the ordinary pot they used to make. They would have made pots, say, this big, and uh, would use them to boil it down. Depending on the season, it takes um, a ratio of perhaps 40 gallons of sap to make one gallon of syrup. And then it's almost uh, a one-to-one -one ratio from the syrup to the sugar. You actually get more sugar um, than the volume of the syrup. And that process, um, like the process of boiling down the sap, takes patience and observation um, with not only your eyes, but your nose and your ears and just and sensing how the um, syrup is changing. And what we're going to do today is use a propane stove and a, a, a modern um, copper-bottomed pot to boil the sugar down, or the syrup down, into sugar. So the process is all about evaporating the water out of the syrup and then cooking the syrup long enough so that it starts to convert to sugar. It'll go through stages where it foams up and then it'll quiet down and then the bubbles will get bigger and then it'll foam up again. So it requires a lot of patience and observation. And you can see how the bubbles are kind of small at this point. When it's getting close to being ready to be made into sugar, the bubbles are about the size of a toonie. So we have a ways to go here. And you'll see as we get, just before we pour it into the trough, you can make it like a cut in the foam and it 
takes a while to to uh, settle back down. The cut stays in the foam. So we're getting close to having this become molten sugar. You can see by the size of the bubbles that the bubbles are much bigger than when we first started. The bubbles that are coming up over here and breaking. And what we're really looking for is not just the size of the bubbles, but as the syrup or sugar um, drips off of the end of this uh, spile here, it starts to form a thread. And we want it to be a thread that will continue down to about here and that we'll be able to break it off. So we're getting very close and this is kind of the, the crucial uh, decision making process in that if you take it off too early, it's not going to granulate and it's going to be more um, chunky and cakey. Um, and there's, there's rain coming this afternoon, so it's taking, um, there's moisture in the air. But what we want to look for is that this thread breaks and that it breaks in the middle. Ah, and there we go. So it's breaking off in the middle, so we should be ready to go. And you can see the consistency of the foam. It's, um, it's really cohesive, and when you make a mark in it, it takes a while for the mark to go away. And the bubbles are very big and deep. So what we're going to do now is take this off the, uh, off the heat and pour it into the sugar trough. And then as soon as it gets poured in here, then we have to start paddling it. And as it's getting paddled, there's more moisture coming off into the air. And then the sugar trough is made out of um, basswood that has no finish on it. So the basswood is dry and porous. And it also pulls the water out of the uh, molten sugar into the wood. And you can see that the consistency is already changing as it's cooling down. It even sounds different. Now it's turning into mud, and this is the crucial point. If we've kept it on long enough, it will be able to start making sugar in just a minute here. I think we're going to be okay. Okay, so now we're going to switch from the, the long-handled paddle to, these are butter paddles. Um, and we're going to, if I can turn this this way, Pull it towards you and push it away from you. And you. Just keep working it back and forth. I can push it to you. And if you turn the paddle over, so you, yeah, there you go. moving, um, otherwise it will start to harden into chunks. And what we're really trying to make here is fluffy granulated 
sugar so that it'll pour just like the white sugar that you buy in the store. Zin's bakwat is the word for sh the maple sugar. We're getting there. Of course, in the older times, before plastic and glass bottles, this is what our ancestors made, sugar, all the way down to the sugar. I'm going to get the sugar cone. So the sugar inside this cone was poured into the cone at the same stage that we put um, the molten sugar into the trough, and it's just the working of the uh, of the sugar, the manipulating of it, and keeping it moving that makes it into granulated sugar. So this is cake sugar, and then this is the granulated sugar. That was a major uh, trade product between communities, but also um, once the fur trade started, a lot of maple sugar was shipped over to Europe, and it was the source of sugar for the kings and queens in Europe. These huge amounts of sugar that they made in the bush, very labor intensive. They didn't get much for this sugar. Uh, but I think what it, that tells us is that our people love to do this. There's a labor of love here that they, they like doing. And it's an activity that kind of open up the year for them in terms of being able to draw a lot of good things from the land that supported them all year round. Miigwech for um, joining us today on this journey of um, from sap to sugar and uh, just being out here on the land with us and um, hopefully catching, um, catching a taste for the magic of the process of um, making uh, maple sugar, Zin's Bakwat. So I want to say to you that a big miigwech for coming to see me today. Uh, I really appreciate uh, the younger generation learning these ways. And I, uh, I want to encourage you to uh, take part in these things. It, it's uh, activity we don't want to lose. It also, I think, what happens is that it teaches you good values. I think it teaches you how to uh, appreciate uh, how much goes towards uh, maintaining uh, uh, the very existence of life itself. So I, I want to thank you for that. I want to, uh, in, in a traditional way, say, uh, that means come back again. Uh, I'd like to see you again. Minwa, Misael, Pompey.